Hello, so welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to try out our very first real-time application. So we installed TI Arters and we also installed the XDC tools that we need. So we have everything we need. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Project Explorer and then import the project here. Nowadays, the most straightforward way is to create a project in, in Code Composer Studio is to import the project from the examples projects provided in the various SDKs. That is the most straightforward way to do it. So anytime we want to create an Arutos project, we're going to import an empty Arutos and then write our code in it. Um, later on in the course, we'll do it straight up from scratch. But I guarantee you, most of the time when you're creating any project in Code Composer Studio, it's going to be using example templates. So, um, let's go back to Resource Explorer and see what we have inside our TI Arctos that we just installed. It's going to take a while to load. So, once it's done, we just search our MCU board here again. I'm going to type TM4C. TM4C123. And then I click over here. And this time you see the TI Arctos has the green arrow by it, meaning we've downloaded a TI Arctos as well. At first it didn't. So then when we come here, it gives us a list of examples. We've got examples for drivers using the various peripherals on the board, the GPIO examples, FAT file system example, SPIU, at USB, etc. We've got kernel specific examples. We've got network examples. We've got instrumentation examples as well. In this course, whenever we're going to create a new project, we'll come here and import an empty project. That's an example called the empty project. And then from the empty project, we populate it with our Arutos object and then we write our Arutos course or code. Initially, this empty example, this empty project used to be here, project, new project. It used to be one of the items you select when you give your project a new name you have the option to select an empty Arctos, an empty SysBIOS project here. But Texas Instruments moved it over here to encourage people to use um, these packages often. So we have to come here whenever we want a new project. You have to come here and then import this to our workspace and then rename it to our project name um, and then proceed from there. But later on, I'll show you how to convert an existing normal project to a SysBIOS kernel project or a TI Arctos project and we shall also look at how to just write everything from scratch. So actually to test our Arctos installation we're not going to start with the empty project. Um, let's start with an existing Arctos project. Um, actually yeah we could use the empty project because the empty project comes with a blinky within it. The difference between the empty project and the empty minimal project is this one has a smaller memory footprint compared to this. This one has been, you know, scaled down. It's been, it's the bare minimum you need. And this one has other features. Therefore, it's, it's called a larger footprint, but it's still an empty project. That's the difference. Don't worry much about this. Um, we'll explain later the difference between these two as we proceed. So I'm going to click this empty project. I can expand it. When I expand it, I see the content and everything starts with the word empty, 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 etc. So um, I've got empty.c, empty.c, cfg, empty readme, make file devs. So I'm just going to import. It's already installed. So I'm just going to import to the IDE by clicking over here. And as I do, it's creating the project, right? And now it exists here, the empty project. Since this is just to test the um, the TI Arctos installation, I'm not going to rename it and populate it with my custom stuff. We're just going to rebuild it and expect it to run its default code. Right, so this is it. Um, so this, this project, I'll just give a quick overview before we start creating things from scratch. So this project here has one task. It's called this task known as the heartbeat FXN. In SysBias, whenever you see FXN, it means function. It's a fancy way of pronouncing function. So this is the task. And what this does is it toggles the 
um, the blue LED on the Tiva C board, LED zero in the board support package is blue. So that's all it does. This is this code here creates the task object. We'll look at how to do all of this from scratch. So I'm going to rebuild this by clicking over here. And it's rebuilding. So once rebuilding is done, I can either click to debug or click to run. I can just come click run over here and click load. Because I've never loaded this, it doesn't exist here. I can select here, select program to load. And then it brings me here, then I browse my project. And then our new project is called MTEKTM4C. This is the project we imported. Then I can expand the debug folder and then I have my output file here. I'll just select and then click OK. When I click this, it's going to load without taking me to the debug view. So this this what's going on, it's downloading into the board. And once it is done, it would reset the board automatically on its own. And as we can see, it is blinking. So our real-time application is running on the Tiva C board now. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to change the color here to a different LED just to show that indeed this is running. Since our first Blinky experiment was also blinking blue, I'll just change this to LED1 in the board support package. I think LED1 is either green or red. It has to be green or red. So I'll just rebuild this. And once this is done, I click back here and then load. Just select this because we loaded it, it exists here. I select this to load onto the board. So as we can see, a different color is blinking now. It's a mixture of blue and green blinking now. It's because blue is initialized in the code. The blue is turned on over here. Blue is turned on, so blue is always on, and this other color is blinking. Therefore, we have this strange mixture here. In fact, I'm just going to simplify the whole thing by commenting out this line. And I'll rebuild. And it's done rebuilding. I'll just download onto the board now by clicking Run, Load, and then selecting this. And as you can see, just the green is blinking because LED1 is green. So this is it. our real-time installation is up and running. So in the next lesson, we shall start developing our real-time applications and we shall and we shall learn all the various aspects and features we need in order to create our real-time applications. I'll see you in the next lesson.